I look back and think that was a mistake. When I turned up, it was crazy. I was thinking, hold on. A few weeks in, I'm thinking, okay, I can see why you're here. Should never be here. And he says to me, I still have scars from when you kicked me. I was at Newcastle, so passionate but it's so cold. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I thought you were going to say. It's so cold. When I say it's cold, I mean it's a different country. Remember going to watch that. him in random pubs play his trumpet with his band? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm yeah, going to need more that. detail on this, please. That, no, but he was, still, like, he was in some sort of band playing a trumpet and he'd say, right, we've got a gig in the, I don't know, making a pub up with King William in... Epping, seven of us boys go fancy going up and watching Nobby tonight playing his band. And we'd go up, have a couple of pints, cheer him on. Hello and welcome to Ironcast and welcome. 51 league games for West Ham across two spells and rumour has it, a boyhood West Ham fan. Welcome to Ironcast, Lee Bowyer. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here and I'm honoured to be sitting next to Ginger again. <laughs> We're long enough apart that he ain't going to kick me, so I'm happy. <laughs> no, I don't know. You, 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 Give them back. Don't worry about that. <laughs> did you used to sit near each other in the dressing room? What were they, where yeah. did, Who did you sit next to? Yeah, but I, I can't remember who I used to sit next to, but we always it was all be, pretty tight at yeah, Chad Relief, mate. Yeah, it? Chad Relief, it was <laughs> tight. And, and, um, but yeah, we always yeah, stayed in touch, always, kept yeah. good friends. Like we, we had a good group then, didn't we, James? Well, we ended up in Birmingham together a little bit as well, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. You was yeah, up yeah. when I was up at Villa as well. Yeah. Oh, really? Mm. You were really bumping to each other in the yeah, nightclubs of Birmingham? Uh, no, we, had, we, had, we had passed the nightclubs by then. <laughs> Something like that. S sun, Sunday afternoon pubs. Yeah. That was about it. So, Lee, I touched on it at the start. The rumour was always, because you're born in Cannon Town, that you are a, a childhood West Ham fan. Are those rumours true? Um, part of it. I yeah. wasn't brought up in Cannon Town. Right. Um, I was brought up in Poplar. Okay. So just not far, not far, not far. Not far. Yeah. Um, but everyone likes the Canning Town sound because that's the, <laughs> it sounds more West Ham. It sounds better, yeah. doesn't Popular, it? Yeah. So, um, but obviously, yeah, a big West Ham fan. And there was other rumours that me and Nobes was related. Um, oh yeah, I remember that. That he was my cousin, but that wasn't true either. Um, <laughs> as much as I would like Nobes to have been my cousin, he's a lovely lad. Um, but that wasn't true. But my cousin did play in the same uh, kids team as Nobes coming through at West Ham. So maybe that was the, that was the link. Yeah. that was the link where people thought that he was my cousin, but no, unfortunately he's not. <laughs> but you used to go to West Ham games. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. From a young age, like um, I just heard Crofty there speaking, and and I used to go as a young kid watch Jules Paris and Devonshire and Billy Bonds and and times like John Lowell was manager at, at certain times, and um, then it was like the McAvenny era and Tony Cotty, you know, so. Julian Dix, Ray Stewart, like oh. proper penalty takers, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, and I was also at that that uh, cup final that that Crofty was talking at uh, the cup game that Crofty was talking about against Liverpool. I was also at that game, the four one where Paul Wint scored too. So I, I was also there. So oh man, where, 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 did, where would you position yourself? Were you in the kind of north bank behind the goal where the kids pressed up against the net? Yeah, I was, stand. I was, yeah. So next to where the away fans were, then there was like a little metal separator, and then we was, we, me and my mates, we'd been like the the bit next to them, and then it's let's all form a circle and all that. That was one of the songs <laughs> that used to go around, and people used to go bundled across the circle that you'd formed. So yeah, good, good times, good times. I oh, see, so proper, you really are proper, proper yeah. West Ham fan. I tried to keep that to myself a little bit, you know, I couldn't get too far ahead of myself like yeah. when I played for the club that was a massive like part of my career that I wanted to tick off and um, you said 51 appearances that disappoints me I would like to have played more I think the first time I came I was injured when I arrived mm. um, so that didn't end well but the second time that's why I came back because I felt like people didn't see the real me because I, I was obviously playing with an injury at the time the first time so so yeah that, that was the, the big part of, of me coming back the second time. We'll get we'll get through to the, when you actually started playing for West Ham. But I wanted to deal with the early part of your career because you played for Senrab, which uh, also Bobby Zamora, Paul Koncheski, a famous boys team just around the corner. John Terry, Ledley King, so many great players come through from that team. But the connections to West Ham, like you're right on the doorstep, you're playing for Senrab. You end up at Charlton. Yeah. Why? Um, <laughs> explain yourself <laughs> I'm still annoyed it, it's, it's, it's a long story but I'll cut it as short as I possibly can without boring everyone so when I was a young kid I was playing at Simrab and then I got picked up by West Ham as a kid so I must have been around seven eight years old something like that um, and then 
I was going to trad relief and training in the indoor Asha turf, like which was obviously like concrete. Back then. This is a bit different now. <laughs> I don't know. Is it is it still the same? No, no, no. They've done a lot. Yeah, I like to think they've done a bit more now. Um, so then, yeah. So I was there for a few years training at West Ham Academy as a kid, and then I uh, I ended up moving on to Arsenal. So then I went on to Arsenal from there. Um, done a few years there in in their academy, and then they released me when I was like 13, 14, something along them lines. They said I was too small. I don't get it, you know. I'm quite <laughs> like a big fella, like. <laughs> um, so, yeah, they released me, and then I ended up going to Cholton uh, around 14, 15, whatever age I was that I left Arsenal. And um, so, yeah, went on from there. So then I ended up breaking through Cholton's academy. At, um, I think I played first team when I was 17, so. Wow. So, yeah. And who, uh, Senrab, who were you playing? Were you playing with any teammates that went on to become? No, so it's mad. Like, every age group, I think, like, Muzizi, he, he played for him as well, you know? And I think every age group, there would be one or two that came through and, and, and went on to play at a higher level. There was a lad, one lad called Michael Black that I used to play with, um, and he was at Arsenal Academy. and. Like they released me when I was a kid, but they kept him because he was like the golden child. Every club mm. has a golden child. I'm guessing Nobes was the golden <laughs> child at West Ham, you know. So, um, but they kept Michael, released me, um, and then I went on to do whatever I done. And 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 Michael might have played uh, like some non-league stuff, I think. So, um, so yeah, no, the, the odd player does come through from each. Uh, age group like probably a couple of years younger than me. What was it with that with that team, Bo? Why why, why, why do you think you had so many? Was it the area you was in, and 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 just the football you played on the street and that maybe or yeah? Because there's I, so many names. The list is yeah, endless of the boys who came through. I, I just think like where we was brought up, Ginge. You know, like we we weren't we weren't born with a silver spoon yeah, in yeah. their mouth. You know, like you had to uh, earn everything mm. and 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 do everything the right way, and then where. We never really had much to do. And then all you done is play football. Play like football, that was yeah. our life. Um, I'd come home from school and I'd play football. Like get my mates right, let's go and play football. Yep, same. Um, you'd go and play for Simrab on a Sunday and then you'd come home and then you'd play football. Like everything <laughs> yeah. was football. Um, so yeah, I think, and, and because of the the area where you brought up, you have to be tough Yeah. and, and you have to earn everything. And, and I think that's a big part of why a lot of footballers are from the areas that they're from mm. because you, you have to be hungry and earn everything that where you want to get to. Mm. Uh, and I would say, would well, you would be the same, Gene, yeah, from, yeah. from, from, from Wales? Well, yeah, know? it's the same. I say it all the time. That's all, we, that's all it was to do was play football. We didn't have the, <laughs> didn't have the numbers, obviously, of players and calibre players you had, but it's, it's supposed, right, well, you'd be at the school or you'd yeah. be out playing football till... Your mum called you in for your dinner every yeah. day. And then you play on the weekend, you do the same next week. Yeah. But it's amazing that like, the numbers and the, the names that have come through is frightening. Mm. Yeah, it really is incredible. But it was, so it wasn't at Charlton that I'd say you came to national prominence. It was at Leeds, specifically this Champions League run, 2001. And your performances as well, goals against the likes of AC Milan, Barcelona. It was a great Leeds team. But now we know what happened after that, you know, Leeds running out of money. My question to you would be, when Leeds are on this great run, did you get the sense that the, where was the money coming from? <laughs> did that <laughs> no, look like? No, because no, I, especially me, but most players, they live in their own bubble. Like they, they, you've got your own yeah. bubble, you've got your routine, you go to training, you come home, you relax, you, you, you eat, you play golf, you, whatever you do. I especially didn't take any notice of anything else because all I loved was training and playing and, and the camaraderie with all the players. I loved that. Everything else to do with football, I didn't really enjoy. So all the travelling here, there and everywhere, I, I, I didn't love it, you know. Obviously, you have to do it, but that wasn't a, a big part of why I liked football. But for me, the the, the biggest Thing, like I was so in my own little bubble, I, I couldn't tell you anything that was happening away from the training pitch, like behind the scenes with the club. Um, like my friends, what you're talking about them Champions League days. My friends used to ring me and say, "Oh Lee, you're playing Valencia and you're playing against this player," and and I'm thinking, "Who's he?" I don't like, know. Yeah. I don't even know who he is. Like I don't watch mm. no European football. Like I didn't care. I would just turn up, 
do my job, play, go home. Do you know what I mean? And they'd be like, get his shirt, get his shirt. I'm like, who's he? Who's he? <laughs> like, so, yeah, I, I, I just lived in my own bubble. Yeah. What, what, a, I mean, te- what a team, though, you yeah. had there then. Yeah. Oh, and that, and we that never won run nothing. as well, that Champions League run, yeah. those games. How we didn't win nothing was crazy. Like, And it was such a young squad as well. Mm. Like Most of them, a lot of them come through the academy. Um, you had the likes of uh, Ian Hart, Harry Kuehl, Jonathan Woodgate, Alan Smith, um, the, the Paul Robinson, the goalkeeper. Like the, the spine of the team was, was solid. And then you they, they introduced like Rio, Rio yeah. coming from from West Ham to, Viduka. to Leeds, Viduka, Jimmy Floyd, Hasselbank, Robbie Fowler. Like the strikers yeah, the names, I played with is ridiculous. Even on the way, like we're driving to a Champions League game. And then we'd have a sing song on the bus on the way to the game. <laughs> Normally people do it, after, do it after, but we were so relaxed and comfortable in what yeah. we all brought to, to to the team. We we would do this and and, and just like have a sing song. It'd, it'd be mad, and then get off the bus and then just go and win a game and then jump back on and just like it was normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Again, January two thousand and three, you start thinking about leaving mm. uh, Leeds, and before West Ham really come on the radar, you nearly go to Liverpool. Yeah. But, and it seemed like, I remember thinking, I remember the newspapers, like the deal was done and it yeah. seemed to get pulled at the last minute. And Gerard yeah. Houllier said something like, he questioned your desire or something like that. And I know that Ginger, you know, I don't want to speak ill of the dead, but you know, not massive fan. It's not fair to say you're a huge fan of Gerard Houllier. Yeah, for, for different reasons. But yeah, we'll, for different we'll, reasons. But what, we'll so why did that Liverpool transfer not happen? It seemed like it was a done deal. It was, it was, I was there having a medical. And oh, it, it was that far. It was done. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was there halfway through my medical, and then I was thinking to myself, okay, I've just done six years, I think, at Leeds, and both clubs had agreed the deal, and then I was just laying there thinking, hold on, I've just done six years at Leeds. I'm now gonna go to Liverpool for another five years. I see eleven years away from home, like I'm a homely person. Mm. Liverpool's even further away from from home than what Leeds is, and and I just thought, do you know, what? and I'd heard rumours that on when you're even doing a warm up, see, like what I was saying about the Leeds, the camaraderie, we'd always have a laugh. But as soon as you step onto the pitch and it becomes so professional, it's unreal. Mm. Um, there was a fine line, but I, I'd heard rumours at, at Liverpool that you couldn't even talk in the warm up, and there was so many rules, you know. And I'm thinking, hold on, like. I like to have a laugh. I'm, I'm a bubbly person. And and I just thought, you know what? This just doesn't seem right for me today. Do you and think it, that would have brought something out of your game as well, though, Bo? Was that, was that in your mind? Like, you know, every player's different. Like before the game, like you say, you're bubbly, you'd like a laugh and that. If you couldn't have done that at Liverpool, it probably would have affected your game on the pitch, do you think? Yeah, because then I'm going home and then like yeah. I've not even... Because when you, you know, Ginge, you have so many hours in the day that you have to try and occupy yourself. Mm. And if I'm living in Liverpool on my, uh, alone, then if I can't even have a laugh at work to a certain extent, then what, what my whole life is just like... Yeah, like robots. Yeah, like regimented. So I just thought, you know, it'd be different. If I'd only done like three years at Leeds and then gone to there, it'd have been different. But to do six and then another five away from home, so far away from home... But I'm half contradicting myself here because I know what's coming. <laughs> um, because where I moved after that was even further away from us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so so yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm contradicting myself. But at that time, it just didn't feel right. The combination of another five years plus not being able to to have a laugh here and there and, and be so regimented, I think. Um, but I look back now, and um, obviously hindsight's a, a, a lovely thing. But I... That's the one thing I regret in football. Mm. What? Not, 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 not going, going to Liverpool. I was just going to yeah, say yeah. that. Yeah, Given I regret the, the that. The years imagine. you spent at Newcastle. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Because... Uh, I, did I, you I, regret it? Not instantly, but... Not instantly, so, not, Like, now you're Towards the end. Was, was it your, did, towards the end. Did, did I should you have kind gone of there. stop the transfer then? Yeah, yeah. I just said to my agent, look, this Yeah, this ain't going to work. How did that go down with Liverpool? Yeah, they wasn't too happy. It wasn't too happy because we were so far along the line. Yeah, you know? done, yeah. oh, well, when you read about this, it's, it's like it's how, like it's presented like Hule pulled the plug, but no. it was actually you. Well, yeah, yeah. I was I was on the treatment table and then halfway through, and then we had a break, and then I spoke to my agent and said, "Not feeling it." Did you? Wow. <laughs> I've got visions of you and your agent just like scuttling off on the training ground, or did you have to sit there and front it with them no, and no, say, "We ain't doing it. this"? Yeah, yeah. Did you? Yeah. I just like, said, like it just don't feel right. So. 
But that is the the one regret I've in in my whole career that I look back and think I should have gone there because they was flying at the time. Yeah. So we was just above them. Like Leeds was just above them at the time, and we was in Champions League. They was in the Champions League, and and then obviously Leeds fell out of Champions League, and then Liverpool went on to win the Champions League. So it was. I look back and think that was a mistake. And then once um, Glenn Road had come knocking on the door, it was like, wow, well, I'm going back home and I'm going back to the club that I supported mm. as a kid. It was a no-brainer. Um, the only problem was that West Ham was bottom when I came. <laughs> so he said, look, come and try and help us stay up. So my heart overruled my head because realistically, it should never have, it was, have gone yeah. there like for your own... On a six-month contract, six-month well. contract, mm. and and my contract then I'd already because that was the summer of Liverpool. That the, the Liverpool situation was in the summer, um, and then it was the January window that um, I was then going to become a free agent at the end of the season. So then I'd agreed to go to Newcastle in January, um, but come and help West Ham for now. Oh, really? So, so when you joined West Ham in the January, the Newcastle deal was kind of done? Yeah, yeah. We just agreed that that's where I'd go in the summer. No way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, so man. This, this just, is like just the exclusive. Why, why so I'll it? tell you why, right? Because in that January of 2003, we're bang in trouble. We yeah. sign you. Yeah. And I was like, well, we're going to be fine. Yeah. We've got Lee Bowyer joining. This is yeah. incredible. We had Les Ferdinand, I think, mm. came in in that yeah, same yeah, window. Yeah. Rufus Brevet. Yeah. And we were already a half decent team. We had a few injuries. There's some great players. Like, I, when I arrived, team. I was, I arrived. What was this, 2003? January 2003, yeah. yeah. But when I arrived, I'm looking in the dressing room and you had um, Joe Cole, mm. Michael Carrick. Jermaine Defoe. Jermaine Defoe. Glenn Dave, Johnson. David James. Unbelievable. Glenn Johnson was just breaking through. You had Steve Lomas. Mm. Um, who was the striker? De Canio, uh, Canute, De Can Canute, Canute, Canute. What striker he is? Yeah. Like a proper player. And and then you had De Canio that was uh, obviously off the rails a little bit, but <laughs> but the talent was unreal. Trevor Sinclair, like yeah. the, the, the players, and I'm thinking, what's going on here? Nigel Winterburn, like left back, mm. and I'm thinking, what's like? How were they here? Um, like, was, yeah. the, yeah, you bottom. Like you've got a proper team here, but I, I don't know conceded too many set pieces here and there and we didn't even rehearse them like when I turned up it was crazy I was thinking hold on like this well as in that was the reason they were, like you're saying yeah. about the players but if it's not yeah. if it's not right you could see yeah. it because you see it straight because I come from like I'm saying at Leeds we'd have a laugh yeah but as soon as you step on the pitch like business it, time yeah you you go like and, and you guided and you do what you, you're told at West Ham I turned up and I was thinking, hold on, <laughs> this is like an holiday camp. Like, this is, <laughs> really? This is crazy. Like, yeah, it was mad. I, I was, I was disappointed. Shocked. Disappointed and least. shocked. Yeah, because I was thinking, this is why you are where you are. Look at the players, all the talent. Sorry, all the talent that you've that you've got. Um, but and and again, when I turned up, I had one leg. Like my ankle was was busted. Scott Parker done that. <laughs> Did he? Yeah, he Dropped done that. Yeah, sure. bad tackle from behind. So it's all right. We, we got <laughs> even. That, was, that, that injury happened, happened at West Ham. No, no, oh, no. it happened at, at, Leeds, at Leeds. Then yeah. I, I then come. Ah, uh, right, right. right. Where was Scott? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Of course, he wouldn't Scott have been was there. Was at Charlton. Charlton. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bad tackle there. Yeah. yeah, but then when I Get got him off. back in in at Charlton, then he, uh, then all the Charlton fans then turned on me because obviously <laughs> they loved me because yeah. I, I, I was a kid come through yeah, and moved on. But then once I, I I got Scotty back, then they turned on me a little bit. But it was a bad attack. He caught me with a bad one, yeah. like from behind, and, and and messed up my like uh, around me Achilles. So I had to have an operation in the summer. I oh, just yeah. couldn't run no more. Yeah, because you didn't play. I think it's eleven games. I think yeah. you might play in that first spell. It's and, not loads, and they would have all been hobbling as well. So <laughs> yeah. I was trying, but it just didn't work. Like I just couldn't move. So that's what I'm saying. I came here. My heart told me to come to to try and help. But I knew that I was struggling and I just thought, oh, I'll be all right. Like, I'll get mm. through it, just play through that pain and then just try and help. But I just physically couldn't in the end. Oh, Killed man. me. It's interesting, yeah. you know, like, because we've spoken to people who are in that team. I'm a bit obsessed with that 2000, 2002, 2003 season because we have so much talent. It doesn't make sense to me how we went down. Mm. Well, it does but, now. Well, it does now. <laughs> when, I speak to pe when I speak to people like Freddie Canuto, who have been, to the club, been at the club a while, they kind of, they don't really have, they can't really give us a good reason but when i speak to people like you and i've spoken to les ferdinand about this who came in in the january they all say they're really surprised by the way things were being run 
and I don't know if that's because they're coming from the outside looking in, you're a bit of an outsider. Maybe you can an- analyze the situation better than people who had been here a bit longer. Yeah, but it was just the basics. Like, it, I'll tell you one simple thing. So when I arrived, say three games in, we was conceding set piece after set piece after set piece. And I'm thinking, wow, like, and, and then the, the manager said to me, like, Lee, what, what do you think? Like, you've just come from there. And I said, I'll tell you what I think. I'll be honest with you. How about if we start rehearsing set pieces <laughs> yeah, might help. And on a Friday and give everyone a job? Because it just seemed like it was... What, was it that? But as in there was that no was, that setup? Was, yeah. And then from that day, we started rehearsing on the Friday and doing set pieces. And then we stopped conceding yeah. from set pieces. And then we started to win a few games, you know? And you're thinking, okay, like, come on. It's not rocket science here. <laughs> no, do you know yeah. what I mean? And I've just, like I said, I've just come from there where everything was like on 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 ball. And then I came, I was thinking, wow, like, just wasn't, it wasn't good. Like, I yeah. could see when I arrived a few weeks in, I'm thinking, okay, I can see why you're here. Mm. Should never be here, yeah, but I can, I can see, see why. why. You you missed the the final few games of the season with that injury, so you weren't there. Yeah. I think Birmingham away is the final game of the season when we go down. So where where did you go to St Andrews? Did you wash it at all? On no, I, I'd have just put. I think I'd just had the operation then, so I'd have been at home just just watching from home. Oh so. man, yeah. So you go to Newcastle and a big exclusive. That was a pre arranged deal. I can't believe that. <laughs> Yeah. What if we'd have stayed up and you'd like starred for us? But the, the deal was like, I'm just coming to try and help. Yeah. Like that, that was it. Irrelevant it was if you stayed up or not. Uh, no, no, it was just was come done. try and help. And then obviously I wanted to play for West Ham because obviously that was something I wanted to tick. So I was like, okay, tick two things here and, and then yeah. move on from there and whatever's meant to be is meant to be. So yeah, it was that was always the deal before I arrived. And, wow. and West Ham knew that as well. So you go to Newcastle, you have a few years in Newcastle, and then you come back for a second spell. And yeah. as you say, you feel like you had unfinished business. Yeah, that, exactly that. Unfinished business. And obviously, Pards, I knew Pards. I played with him at Cholton, so that made it a little bit strange. We played in midfield together. Oh, really? At, at Cholton. Was he much of a player, Pards? He, he was like a... Palace as well, that yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, box to box, put his foot in. Yeah, I can imagine More of that. an organiser, because I... He was at the end of the career when, yeah. when I've obviously played with him and I was just a kid coming through. So, But he helped me, guided me yeah. a little bit, you know. So, But then for him to be your manager and I <laughs> knew him as Pards, like, all right, Pards. Yeah. So I'd say to him, all right, Pards, oh, Gaffer, sorry. Like, yeah. so, um, but he was he was a good man. And then he, he, he'd come knocking in the summer and then I thought, yeah. Again, like, Newcastle, I don't know. I'm just a southern lad, you know. Yeah. And then I was at Newcastle. And I loved my time there. Like, so passionate. The fans are unreal. But it's so cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is not what I thought you were going to say. It's so cold. <laughs> it snows five times a year. <laughs> like, let me tell you, when I say it's cold, I mean it's a different country. <laughs> Even from Leeds to Newcastle, which is only two hours away. It's a different country. Like, so see now, and I spoke to someone at, at Newcastle recently. This is God's honest truth. I spoke to someone, at one of the coaches, because they've had so many injuries. And we had the same problem when we was there. Bellamy, Dyer, like yeah. everyone injured all the time in the winter. And and I, I said to him, I rang him because I know the coach. And I said to him, do you know what? This is my philosophy. Like, this is <laughs> this my thinking. It's so cold up there. You can't even keep warm. <laughs> so then when you're standing around and you're doing like set pieces or yeah. you're doing shape, like to say the new guys are playing Liverpool, right? You've got to watch Salah and you, then you stop, you have a little talk, then you move on. By the time you move on, your again. muscles are frozen. <laughs> and that's why, and that's my philosophy. Like I could be completely wrong, but I think the weather definitely plays a part up there. <laughs> so you come back for your second spell. Interesting in the, like... Your time at Newcastle, most people will talk about the fight with Kieran Dyer. Like, it's a, no. big, a big moment in your career at Newcastle. But of course, when you come back to West Ham, Kieran Dyer arrives back in the, the dressing room here. I presume you were, you'd were you made up by then. I brought him with me just to keep him coming. Like. <laughs> he was uh, like, it's too cold up here. Yeah, yeah, it's too cold. Come come back down here, Kieran. He was getting injured too much. So, um, yeah, and Bellamy. Bellamy came Bellamy as well. Came as well, same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So Kieran and Bellas. But again, like... The, that's when the Icelandic people were yeah. in charge, I think, and chucking some money around. Mm. Um, but yeah, Kieran came again injured quite a lot. I think in in his time here, like he was, 
we were just unlucky. He had at, a bad at injury, time. double leg break, Broke wasn't he? Quite Bristol, early. Bristol Rovers was away in the yeah, cup yeah. game. It was, yeah. Ooh. I was the first bad. one there when he. Yeah, there's a uh, picture, and, 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 I, yeah. and I was the one like, um, what's the word? Consoling, consoling him, like, him yeah, yeah, consoling him. I was one. Yeah, me and Kieran, like, moment of madness up there. Um, is what it is. Would I change it? Yeah. How how do you even fall into that? Like not even recognize so that. Rare, There's isn't it? fifty so odd rare. thousand people yeah. there. Like ah, I don't know. I think when you go though, you go. Then yeah, like, yeah. You don't, you, you, you that don't was my problem. I was like green red. I never had amber. <laughs> <laughs> so then, like if I ever oh, did of, overstep sounds the Sounds like line, you went a bit blue in Newcastle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, but how yeah, was that? Are we alright talking about it? Like how was Sunus with that? So you too. Yeah, he, wasn't he must happy. have gone mental, did yeah. he? And and Shearer more so. Big L, yeah, yeah, yeah. More Big than L. more than Sooners. Yeah, because Al obviously recognised straight away. We had a semi final against um, Man United oh, FA Cup, so then we was banned for that. So um, Al was like, "Well done," like because he'd not won nothing yeah, in Newcastle. Course, yeah. We thought that was a chance. So yeah, we both had to um, to miss out on that. So yeah, they they weren't happy. Weren't yeah. happy. Let's put it like that. Oh, two they're... tough men as well. Sunas yeah. and Shiva. Oh, don't want to, you don't want to upset them. You don't want to upset them. fighting too. against them, Pete. No, no, no. No, they're the wrong pair. Um, <laughs> oh, I just want to ask about this. Like, when you both get sent off, you, do you both go in the same dressing room? Or you yeah, had you yeah. kind of... We had security come with us, though. So, oh, even in the tunnel, we still was like, still fuming. And uh, the two massage lads, they're, they're, uh, they worked in prisons as well. So, they was like... <laughs> So now like prison guards. It's so the they, story. They, it's their the day, story that keeps the yeah, their day job is like masses and then their night job is like prison guards. So then they're the big strong men. So they just picked us up, chucked them on their shoulders. <laughs> Settle down, like, you yeah, go away, away. Two little kids, like sit in the corner, little kids. So <laughs> um yeah. But obviously we we got separated. We were still in the same dressing room. Then then you start then coming down and yeah, thinking, Oh God, my done. God, what we've done, like yeah, and we was we was gutted, so but for, yeah. for, when you join, rejoin West Ham, your first season back, we're on this high. We've just been to the FA Cup final. We signed Tevez and Mascherano. Ginger's there. And as a fan, I was thinking, great, here we go. We're going to really kick on this season. But of course, we struggle. Yeah. And then you're instrumental towards the end of the season uh, with the great escape. You're playing a lot of those games, Arsenal away, included the, the first team to beat Arsenal at the Emirates. Bobby scored, didn't he? One yeah. Nil. yeah. They had, remember that game? They yeah, had 38 yeah, yeah. shots on goal or something, or 38 attempts, and <laughs> yeah. he won one now. Yeah. <laughs> Unreal. I tell yeah. that story all the time. It's the <laughs> maddest game of football ever. Yeah. No, those were good times. But like, Blackburn away you played, where it started as well. Yeah, Blackburn, Blackburn away. Remember, Middlesbrough you Tevez played. on the line. Bobby's hit it against Tevez. Tevez yeah, yeah. is offside or whatever, yeah, and yeah. you got a dodgy penalty. What, what about Mascherano can't get in the team? I know. <laughs> I was reading to someone about this the other day and I was thinking, like, it just makes me laugh because I think you've got these two Argentinian stars and they've turned up and you're thinking, have we got these? Like, Did they, you know who they were when they turned up? I Bob? didn't know who they was, but I, I know they played for Argentina. If yeah, you're playing for Argentina, yeah. you're a proper you got, player. You can play. I, yeah. remember being at, um, I remember being at Upton Park and we were literally training, I think, and Pards come out of the tunnel with them. Yeah, yeah. And everyone's going... And I'm thinking, am I the only one who ain't got a clue who these boys are? <laughs> I didn't know. But I'm not. Was. I'm not a big fan of South American football. <laughs> no. you know what I mean, I think I, I knew you would be thinking the same. Yeah, I, I said you earlier. I don't take no notice of nothing. <laughs> but I know I've got two Argentinian players. <laughs> you got a chance. <laughs> they can play. <laughs> yeah. One's a striker who's going to score you goals, and one's a midfielder that's going to protect yeah. you. Like that. That. That's a good flipping addition to yeah. the squad. Yeah. But they couldn't get in the team. Mm. And then you're thinking, what's going on? Were they good in tra- like, they're brilliant in training, I presume. They, you can tell. Like yeah. they, they weren't fit though, Ginger. No. When they arrived, they weren't fit. No. Like you can tell they've had a nice summer. <laughs> <laughs> to put it politely. <laughs> to put it politely. Like they took a while to catch up. Carlos no, he was obviously he didn't he didn't try his tie his laces in training though. Can you remember? Oh, he remember. didn't really try a leg in training and I but to come to a way. Saturday, turn the tap on, he was unbelievable yeah. but Javier was at some trainer wasn't he yeah yeah flat out smashing into people like yeah. it was unreal. a machine though. yeah it was a machine like the way he read the game like mm. to read it broke everything up and I like someone to just protect that back what he done at Liverpool so he left the house couldn't get a game for us <laughs> went to Liverpool and then played in the Champions League final that season <laughs> that went on to Barcelona <laughs> yeah but I mean that season, that season. that he left oh, he yeah, left in yeah, January yeah, yeah. 
I'm sure I'm right here. He left in January and then went and played in the Champions League final <laughs> later that season. Like, what's going on? Like, that Hayden was on fire, though. Yeah. Hayden oh, Mullins on. on fire. I can't <laughs> change. Yeah, you're the I can't first give, person. I can't Everyone give Hayden usually says, no, Hayden was really keeping him Come out of the on. team. You're the first person <laughs> to say on. no. All right. He might have been playing well, but the lad's just gone and played in the Champions League final. <laughs> Like, come on. Like, <laughs> I love Aiden, and he was a great lad, but we can't. And like you just said, he went on to play for Barcelona. Like, how's he not getting in our team? I don't know. Maybe that's a question for Pards. I was Pards. Yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, I was yeah. Pards. Maybe he's saying we didn't. Oh, I didn't anyway. Talked about the great escape. I was, you talked about 2003. I was a team. We found ourselves in that spot. Mm. I still don't really know how, no. how he was there. Crazy, but Cur oh, who came in? Curbs, Curbs after yeah. that? They Curbs, swapped, didn't they? Yeah. Pars went Charlton, Charlton come. Uh, put Curbs came from Charlton. Yeah. Curbs, I felt sorry for Curbs. Why? Because he got the sack. And we, to be fair, when he first came in, I, that's when I'd done my shoulder. So I dislocated my shoulder. Um, yeah. Bad tackle at Reading, mm. uh, New Year's Day. I'll say a bad tackle is my own fault, really. I, I did, I, he come on my blind side. I should have known he was coming and then I turned and he just wiped me out it won it won um Sid Sid it might well. have been Sidney then would it it, it wasn't Sidney it was the other one that played in midfield with him I can't remember his name but he wiped me out back it was a good tackle but a bad tackle for me and then I landed like Straight I went up on. in the air and my arm just landed and this came my shoulder I had to come off so then Curb said look don't have the operation because obviously now you're coming into the back end of the season mm. don't have the operation because that was the second time it had come out he said, um, just strengthen it and we're going to need you for, for the running. So I was like, okay, I didn't have the operation. Now nah, it's bloody nightmare. I play tennis, Ginger. I hit, <laughs> a, I hit a smash and then my shoulder, shoulder pops out. out. Like, oh, it's a no. nightmare. So yeah, I should have had the operation, really. You still haven't um, had it? No, I still ain't had it, no. There's no point now, is it? <laughs> well, that's not Kerb's <laughs> fault. That's your fault. Yeah, but he stopped me from having it there. <laughs> yeah, he persuaded me that was the right thing to do. He was good at that, Kerb's, because obviously I knew him from Cholton as well. When I was a kid coming through, he brought me through. But well, um, he was half right, though, because you played in Yeah, he played in a season, lot of the games, yeah. Kept just stayed up. But, he, um, but I felt for him because then they moved him on. And I think at the time he moved, they moved him on. We was like sixth or something in the league. Mm. Sixth, seventh. We was up there. Um, and then they brought in Zola. Um, mm. I thought it was harsh on Kerbs. Like, I, I have to be honest. Pards, I can't really remember what happened with Pards. We were struggling. We just yeah, struggled it was a, to start it was a game season. against Bolton. Yeah. So then yeah, they brought in Kerbs, like stayed yeah. up. And then Kerbs had a good start to the season. Yeah. And then they moved him on. And then I feel Zola like that time out. when Pards and Kerbs swapped, not swapped, you know, both yeah. managing the club. Did we not go to, I think we went to Charlton that season, Pards now being Charlton manager, lost 4-0, didn't we? Was it 4-0 or 3-0? Yeah, there was, there was a heavy defeat to Charlton in there thinking, Oh, wow. I, I think that was, and Anton Sigurd told me there was a lot of recriminations after that game. There was a big uh, yeah. set two in the dressing room, if you remember. Yeah, that, wasn't it? me doing a lot of shouting, but every goal was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit me, Bowie. Yeah, you what are you doing? One. Everyone's <laughs> looking and going, just shut up, James. It's fault, like the goalies, they do that, don't they? Whenever a goalie yeah. lets a goal in, and then he starts jumps up and starts shouting at the defenders. No, hold on, you just, it's just gone in near <laughs> yeah, post. Yeah. Like, what you do is just slip or through your hands and you want to blame I've someone I've got a big else. bugbear on this, and I know you will as well. When a goalkeeper makes a save and gets up and celebrates. Yeah. <laughs> That's your job. It's your job, That's, right? your That's job. what you're paid to do. Yeah, make save, save it, catch it, kick it, roll it out to the boys and all. Easy. It's an easy job. You ain't got to run around or not. Easy job. So we have the great escape, and then we finish 10th in that next season, and we've got some great players. I was just looking at the the lineups. You mentioned Craig Bellamy, but Freddie Lundberg, Nobby Solano, Scott Parker's in the team now. And it felt like it was it was just a really settled period for West Ham, it felt like. So obviously, them lads that was up in Newcastle with me, they realised it was freezing and they wanted to come to London. <laughs> I was, was telling them how warm it is down south. <laughs> so Nobby Solano, like, how did Nobby end Nobby, up at yeah. West Ham? <laughs> South with American, his trumpet. he's thinking that's a bit of me. I need some sunshine. <laughs> um, what a lovely lad he what was. A what a player. What his a right player. foot was unreal. I've never like, seen. I've, I've never yeah. seen someone hit a ball on the outside of his no. foot like it in my life. Oh, yeah. Some of the crosses, Alan mm. Shearer owes him a lot because he, some of the crosses yeah. he puts in is unreal. And Al used to obviously remember going to watch that. him in random pubs play his trumpet with his band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, going to need more in, detail on this, please. That was in Epping, wasn't it? It was in Epping. Yeah, yeah. Nobby used to, like, he was in a, like, some sort of band playing a trumpet, and he'd say, right, we've got a gig in the, I don't know, making a pub up with King William in Epping. 
six of us, seven of us boys go fancy going up and watching Nobby tonight playing his band. And we'd go up, have a couple of pints, cheer him on. What, is he, <laughs> he's on the trumpet. He's on yeah, the trumpet. Yeah. Yeah, he was good. Yeah, he was good. <laughs> Yes. Papa. I almost got my wedding at that. I got married at that sort of time. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't have charged me either, Nobby. No. And then your third spell, your third season and your second spell, you kind of in and out the team a bit bit more. And I think it was in the January of that third season that you go to Birmingham where you go on and you have great mm. success. You win the, the League Cup, play at Wembley. Yeah. Yeah. So that's when Zola come in, isn't it? That's that's where yeah. I was heading earlier because the, as soon as Zola come in, and again, this is a true story, <laughs> um, Curbs went. And we weren't doing too bad, and I was doing all right. I thought score a goal here and there, and but then Zola came, and then the first time I met him, I was on the treatment table just getting strappings before training, and then he's, he goes around, shakes everyone hand, hello, nice to meet you, nice to meet you, and then he says to me, "I still have scars from when you kicked me." Really. <laughs> And that was the first thing he said to me. <laughs> and, and as he's saying this, is he like laughing Serious? about it? No, 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 no. Dead straight? Oh, yeah, straight. Really? Well, it, don't it prove it? I left in January. <laughs> yeah. That's what, that's what I was coming to. So, so it was straight straight yeah. off the bat? Yeah, straight off the you bat. Like, know. boom. And I knew, like, uh, that's not a good start. <laughs> I'm not the brightest, <laughs> but I know that ain't a good start. <laughs> so then, um, but to be fair, he, he, a lovely man. A like yeah. lovely man. He should have been playing in the team. Mate, I I say everyone this, everyone, everyone say around this era time. says this. Do you remember that time when he when he dinked? rolled Matty and Dink Greeny? Yeah. <laughs> oh, mate, I tell it all the time. Oh, it we just signed Matty and Green. Like Matty Upson's come in, and I don't know if Matty tells his story, but I'll tell it for him. <laughs> so Zola's Two touch come as well, in. by the way. Yeah. Two touch game. Balls played into Zola. I used to train a lot. He's rolled Matty. Matty's sort of like don't know where he is, and then he's dinked Rob Green <laughs> from the edge of the box. From the edge of the box. <laughs> And Rob uh, Green just well, watched it like four, going yeah. over his head, like in the top corner. And we're all looking at each other thinking, this fella should You be might playing. have been in the conversation that we generally had in the dressing room saying yeah, yeah. he should be playing. He should be playing, yeah. We had a bit of a story was crisis, than us. didn't we, that season? Oh, it was like, <laughs> honestly. He was better than us. He and used to embarrass kicks. people in training, yeah. Megum and everything. I think we had, had to tell him that he couldn't train anymore. Yeah, you've got to the stop. boys like the gaffers training, <laughs> Megan, people and all that. The boys are coming Saturday, like demoralised by the <laughs> demoralised by the gaffers <laughs> training. Rings around everyone. <laughs> it's like, like forty two, forty three at the time. Yeah, yeah. 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 Free kicks as well. He used to take the boys free kicks, yeah, didn't he? Yeah, he score yeah. like you take ten from one side, ten from the middle, ten from the left foot, the left. right foot, like all different feet. You think, oh, like thirty free kicks. He's scoring like. 23 free kicks and our boys are hitting the wall it's going over the bar it's <laughs> yeah. like boss any chance yeah, yeah. <laughs> no but he was um, yeah but not a good player. start though but that, like he, he was a good player so then again going back to the Leeds days we was a physical side young physical side mm. to stop players like that Ginge yeah. like you would have played against many a top, top striker and then to stop people like that sometimes you can't even get close enough to kick them <laughs> yeah. yeah, like you've got to try and slow him down. Like he's, and that's a credit to him because of how good he is, you know. Mm. Uh, so then sometimes we, we'd fail him. Like that's, that's that was the game, part of the game, wasn't it? It was part of the game. You can't we'd do it now. I fouled him. <laughs> you'd fail him. Like that's what you do. You'd have to like, you'd have to try and slow him down. And obviously, he clearly he, remember, he remembered. He, he, it. I was gonna say he clearly he remembered, remembered it, it mate. Uh, he didn't actually show me the scars. It more than made it feel a bit better. <laughs> but um, but yeah, he. Uh, Lovely man, though, lovely man. And then he just said, Look, Lee, this ain't working. Like, try and go in January. I was like, Okay. Well, he said to you, that. try and go. <laughs> yeah, try and find a club. Yeah. Wow, blimey. So that's why I went I went to Birmingham. So. so you go on, you have a great success at Birmingham. And then you moved into management at first yeah. at Charlton, but now manager of Montserrat, which I have to say, I had to look Montserrat up on a map. I thought I was in the right area, but it sounds like a lovely gig. It's a very nice gig. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. But. How did it come about first? They just approached me, Ginge. Like I'd, I'd been offered a couple of things here and there, um, but it just wasn't right. Do you mm. know what I mean? I'd, my first two gigs has been tough. Um, yeah. My Charlton one was did hard. Did really well at Charlton, though. It did really off. well, but I've I've not been anywhere where I've had anything to go with. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like At Charlton, I took over the last 10 games of the season. The only reason why I went into coaching is just to pass on the knowledge. Like I've worked under some unbelievable managers. Like Terry Venables, Sir Bobby Robson, Graham, so do you know, like George mm. Graham, like a bit of everything from everybody. And then to play with the players that I've played with. So I have to, I felt, okay, Lee, don't just sit at home and watch telly every day. <laughs> Pass your knowledge on, you know, and, and, and that's what the only reason why I went back into it. But then the Montserrat thing came up, like Cholton, it was 10 free games I was mm. meant to have. Then they said, okay, you've won the first three games, carry on. 
So then I carried on that season and we slipped into the into yeah. the playoffs. And then from the playoffs, the next season was my first full season. Then we got promotion. But I never, we went up a division and then took the budget down. Like it, yeah. the man was trying to sell the club. So, which I understood. Do you know you say you didn't plan on being a manager? Did you enjoy it when you were doing it though? Yeah, I loved it because as a coach, you know what I mean? You, yeah. don't, you ain't got no say really. Have you? Yeah, you, you can give your opinion. But then I went from giving my opinion to then now uh, putting my own stamp on everything. Mm. Like there was a few people not doing the right things that I felt from a distance because I wasn't the manager. But then as soon as I took over, right, that, that stopped it. it. Yeah. Like that, that don't happen. You want to play that, do that, then you're gone. Mm. Um, I'm firm but fair, do you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I felt like my time was done at Charlton because yeah. it was like just wasn't getting back, you know. Yeah. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go there, keep them up. When I spoke to them, I asked them the questions about financial fair play because they'd been done the season before. They said that no, there's no financial fair play problems. Um, keep us up. You'll have money to spend. Da, da, da. And then I uh, I kept them up with two games to spare. Yeah. I only had ten. Yeah, quite one five yeah. and uh drew two, lost one. And um end of the season they said, No, nah, look, sorry, we've got no money. And uh, you've got to get rid of players to bring players in. So I lost six senior players. It was just I'm Possible thinking, job. like, what do you want from me? What do you yeah. want me to do? I've just kept you up. I've done everything. I've kept my word. I said I'd come and keep you up. And then now everything's just changed. changed. Yeah. So then yeah. But I kept them up again and, and, and then moved on. So And then Montserrat. And then Montserrat. This is like this is so nice. Because I'm working with a lot of non league players. The people from Montserrat, they have an ambition of trying to get to the World Cup. Is it gonna to be tough? Of course it is. We're ranked hundred and seventy six in the world. Um but it's it's an ambition and and, and, and I'll and it's a bit of a journey and I wanna mm. try and help. I know one thing, I've I've signed a three year deal and then if I leave in three years or five years or ten years, whatever it is, I'll leave them in a better place than when I took over. So that's what I, all I can do. I've done it at Charlton, I've done it at Birmingham. Yeah. So that that's my aim. And I'm passing on my knowledge to a lot of non league players already. We've played six games and they've gone from like there to there. That that's my job, do you know what I mean? And I love it. So and when I'm doing it, I'm in the Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> Not in Newcastle. Uh, there's one Not thing we know Newcastle. about you. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, Weather it's, is very important. Key. Very important. <laughs> so, but I've I've gone to parts of the world already that I would never normally go to, like Nicaragua. We played in Nicaragua home. Uh, I played them home and away in uh, October, and like crazy. Mm. Like the, the, you just seen different parts of the world. Dominican Republic. Must like, be a lot I've of traveling, though, is it? Yeah, it's a lot of traveling because uh, you're in the Caribbean yeah. already. Like that's your base, you yeah. know. Um, so even to get to Montserrat, you've got to fly to Antigua and then jump on a crazy little plane. And I'm not the best, <laughs> not of the best flyers, flyer, yeah. Because obviously my time at Leeds when we had that plane crash. So I'm I'm not a great flyer, but we we sit on this little eight seater to get you a twenty minute flight across, and it's bouncing around, and I'll get off. I'm sweating. <laughs> yeah. I'm, like, I'm like a nervous wreck, but I can do that a, a few times yeah. a, a year. So um, but yeah, I'm I'm loving it there. Lee, thank you so much. Cheers, I've had bro. so much fun no and it's been insightful. We've got some exclusives on this podcast. Mm. I never didn't see that coming. <laughs> uh, brilliant stuff. Good luck with Montserrat. We'll all be watching. And thank you for listening. We'll see you next time on Ironcast. Until then, come on, you irons.